What's up, everyone? What's up, what's up, what's up? Liz, what's happening? What's going on, folks? What's happening? It's been a minute since I did a live. I told you I periodically tap in with you. We'll let the room fill up. See what's happening. Everybody, 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 what's cracking with it? <laughs> What's happening? Good to see everybody. Good to see everybody. Good to see everybody. We let the room fill up a little bit. I told you guys periodically I'd come on. And uh All right. and be a blessing. You feel me? Yeah, come on and be a blessing. How's everybody? How's everybody? How's your Sunday going? How's this Sunday going? What's going on? What's going on, people? What's going on, fam? Bam. You know, periodically, I want to tap in and be a blessing. We'll give it about three more minutes. Be about three more minutes and we'll get going, okay? Hope y'all been enjoying the little clips I've been putting up from the classes. Yes, indeed. Couple of more minutes, man. We'll get cracking. You know, today, today we're gonna do it like, like before. We're gonna do a Q and A Sunday today. I just feel like being a blessing. You know, I know a lot of people be out there. That's my loved one, Billy. Billy Battle. What's up with it, loved one? Remnant member. We'll do a Q&A today, man, just to be a blessing, because I know sometimes people be having a lot of things that they're going on in their lives. You know, you might not be a member or subscriber or whatever. We're going to do a Q&A today, man. I'm going to bless you. We're going to do a Q&A. Yeah, we'll get started in a minute, and I'll put the link in. How's mom's doing, Billy? Tell her I said hello. I love her. <laughs> Relentless vlogs. I love that. <laughs> yeah, that's what's up. Yeah. That makes me feel good, Billy. Tell her I said thank you. Tell her I said thank you. 220, we're going to get it cracking. That's about less than a minute, guys. Less than a minute.
My daughter's in Paris right now. Brownie official, what's happening with it? Yeah, that's what's up. I know it's like eight hours later or something over there, right? I'm going to go ahead and put a link up in there if you guys want to jump on with me. Got a question. I feel like being a blessing today. That's the link if you guys want to get on and you got a question or something. Uh, let's see here. If you got a question. Yeah, Freeze is all right. You know, Freeze is going to be cool. I think he's working on trying to do what he said he's going to do for Philip, for uh, Sinful. She's already over there. So I, I don't know exactly where we're at over there, but she's already over there. All right, guys. You got... um. You guys got the questions. Let's go. Mm-hmm. I'm ready. Shoot. Shoot from the hip. Oh, I'm... You guys ain't got no questions for me? This is your opportunity. Yeah, I'll come through there. Yeah, I'm going to come through there, Brownie. I want to go on a world tour eventually with this information. You feel me? <laughs> so what's on you guys' mind today, man? I'm here to be a blessing. I'm ready to tackle whatever it is. You know what I'm saying? Funny thing is, man, you know, I, I teach on so many different subjects, you know, from the streets to, you know, religious stuff to, you know, the game to just everything. You know, it's, there's not a subject that I don't teach on. Go ahead, Extreme Picks. Go ahead. You want to come on or you just want to ask it from there? If you want to come on, the link's in the uh, chat. But go ahead. Shoot. What's happening? Browning. Hello. What's happening? Oh, yeah, I, was, I got you. What's going on, man? Ask you. <laughs> See you. Yeah. Ask you just one question. Like, when, you know, nowadays, we got the, like, a army of simps, like, the 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 rate of of the sense just going up, you know what I'm saying? Because I don't know why. Maybe it's because of mm -hmm. the the social media or stuff like that. And I feel like male, you got alpha male. And what like when you are alpha male, you don't even got to react or proceed like a simp, like, you know, like, a, like that. But what really make the difference when you are like an alpha male, but women still, still seeing you like... Like a simp. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. Because uh, Brownie Man... 
when people say alpha male, to me, it's just a throwaway line, yeah. you know, because it's a popular term. But yeah. I don't know from their perspective what they mean by alpha male, right? So you, you said why it seems to be a lot of people are, there's a lot more simps. And then so yeah. then I would have to ask you, what is your perspective of a simp, right? Because I don't know what you might consider a simp to be. Somebody might yeah, think yeah, a simp yeah. is something. You know what I'm saying? Somebody mm -hmm. else might think of something. Mm -hmm. so what do you consider mm -hmm. a simp? You know, you know, to me, a simp is like, so first, first of all, it's someone who react over emotion. Mm -hmm. Someone it, it, it depend on women. Every they all were depend on on, 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 on on women. They don't really in, improve themselves, and like they pain to to have women. They 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 they, they, they like begging. You know. They do all kind of mm -hmm. stuff to mm -hmm. to get this to get this piece of cake, this piece of um, of booty. You right, know, so right. Mm -hmm. they be so you think wasting, that? Go ahead. They be they be wasting the energy, the time, the money. You know, mm -hmm. instead mm -hmm. of, of 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 focus on themselves and you know let the broad choose them and. and do the, the 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 next movement the next move oh. well when you grow up man um your mama tells you how you're supposed to treat a lady right uh, yeah. and um she says you know you're supposed to do this for a woman do this for a woman and do that for a woman and she has good intentions and in, and in how she tries to teach her son how she how she should act toward a woman but then you have to ask where's your mama getting that information from Right. Because just because your mama said it doesn't mean that it's true. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Doesn't mean that it's true. But if you growing up and you trust your mama, you love your mama, you thinking that everything your mama tell you is the right thing. Right. Yeah. It's not till you get older till you start trying to figure out, well, where did my mama get this information? Right. Exactly. From, from what right. point of reference did my mama get this information and what makes this information right? Yeah, yeah, See, yeah, yeah, yeah. You need to question yeah, yeah. that, right? So, so if your mama tell you, you know, that a man should always do this, 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 and this, right? Well, my the first thing I'm gonna think, especially when you get older, is, um, how is my mama the authority in what a man should do and should not do? How is my mother an authority on a man? Now, she might be an authority on what she thinks a woman is, but a woman can't be no authority yeah. on what a man is. It take a man to be an authority on what a man is, right? Yeah. So now if you growing up and your mama's giving you all this information from a perspective of a woman, right? So what happens, especially if you don't got your daddy around, what happens is, is you take on the characteristics of your mama. And a lot of those yeah. characteristics, feminine characteristics, Right. Exactly. So you growing up not knowing you've been indoctrinated into a feminized perspective of manhood because your mama exactly. said a man should do this. Your mama said a man should do that. But your mama yeah. has no authority on no man. <laughs> right. So you don't know. You just growing up and you trust your mama. You love your mama. You don't know. Right. So you growing up thinking this is the right thing to do. So that's why we have a lot of men in the situation we have because men have trusted their mothers because they love their mothers and their mothers are telling them, this is how you should do this. This is how you should do that. Right. But she's no authority on no man. You feel me? So that's why you see a lot of this going on today. Right. Yeah. Daddy's going to say, boy, let me tell you something. Let me explain something to you. Yeah. A man don't operate like this. He don't react to this. And your father's going to teach you from a man's perspective, right? Because it's a man's world, mm -hmm. right? If you want to mm -hmm. be successful, right, in your dealings with women, you have to be this way and that way and this way. 
your mama might feel opposed to that because it might be something that she feels offended by, but she really needs. No, really. You see what I'm saying? Personally, my mom really want me to to find, you know, the perfect the perfect model, the perfect teacher, the perfect mentor. You know, like um, when yeah. I was watching us or stuff like that. But I've been I've been in my first players ball in two, in twenty nineteen. You know, mm -hmm. like three. I was with all the players, all the pimps and stuff like that. And I told my mom, I'm like, what I wanted to do. She told me, right. this, if, if you feel like it, just do what you got to do. But mm -hmm, do it mm -hmm. well. You know what mm, I'm mm, mm. So let me just Don't say that, just, man. The first, time, the first time I went to a player's ball was like a couple years ago. I've never been to a player's ball before that because a player's ball doesn't make you official because somebody goes to a player yeah. ball that's not nothing that makes you official because it's more entertainment it's like going to the super bowl or it's like going to a, a concert or it's like you know what i'm saying this does not classify you as being somebody official because you've gone to a player's ball i'm not talking about you in general i'm talking about everybody out there right because i never went to a player ball in yeah, two, yeah, two yeah. years ago all my you feel me saying and and the, the only reason why I went is because my partner, Kenny Red, was having a birthday party and he called me and asked me to go. Right. So since then, I've gone to like three or four of them. And the reason why I've gone to them is because of the entertainment stuff that I do, because I associate it with entertainment. And it's cool. It's a nice play that players can get around and, and have some camaraderie and fun. But I don't want anybody to think because you've gone to a player's ball that somehow this advances you and who you are as a person. That doesn't really mean anything, right? It doesn't give you a tag that because somebody went to a player's ball, this makes him a player or this makes him a hell of a fella because mm. I've never gone to one in two years ago. You feel me? It's just an entertainment, a place that people uh, can come together, that's players, so to speak, quote unquote, and have some fun, right? Give give each other mm. dap, give each other <laughs> prestige and saying, you know, you so player of the year. This, that, yeah. Baby, I think, I think, excuse me, I think you are the first one to say this thing. I think. Right, right. You really got the balls to say these things, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. What is like, it, I don't want anybody to feel like my, you know, <laughs> when I grow up, no, I want no, no to go disrespect, no, di no disrespect to the player's ball, but that's how I felt, you mm -hmm. know, like party. It was just a party. No, yeah, yeah. I, I I didn't really exchange real, you know, real game, game real ism with with. Right, right, yeah, yeah. So, okay, fam, man. Well, thank talk. you for your uh for your call, man. I'm gonna go on and let some other people get some space. Uh, Brownie, anytime, man. Tap in with me, man. I appreciate you, man. It's all love. Man, I huh? Yeah. So anyway, man, um, let me just expound upon that. Because I don't want people to be feeling like, you know, my aspirations in life, you know, is to be able to go to a player's ball. Don't deceive yourself like that into thinking that somehow because you've gone to a player's ball, this is somehow uh, something that makes you official. You know what I'm saying? There's so many different levels of, uh, well, let me say it like this. In the game, in, in the lifestyle that I came up out of, right, there are, there are regional perspectives of the game like if you go to memphis the guys in memphis have a little different the, a memphis style of the game right different from the west coast or maybe down in chicago a little different style of the game you know so it's just there's differences uh, based upon the environment that you're coming up you know what i'm saying and what's pushed right i remember in my dad's time um there were some places that felt like a man shouldn't wear a mink coat right but in California, everybody's wearing mink coats down, you know, when it gets cool enough down to their to their feet. Right. So it's just different perspectives 
from environments that you're coming up out of, right? So, so in Chicago, there's a crew in Chicago, right? And somebody might feel that if you're not affiliated with this crew in Chicago, then you have not been stamped as approval, right? But then, you know, I come up around Mel Taylor, right? And that crew uh, up out of Ohio, because my dad comes from Ohio, where the Magnificent Seven comes from, where one of the founding fathers, Joe Langford, comes from. You see what I'm saying? And and so if you come up around that environment, right, you feel like, you know, uh, that that is what the thing that gives you some stripes or something, if these kind of individuals recognize you, right? So it's different cities, right? You might come up in New York and there's a, a crew over there in New York that gives you some validation if you grow up around them. So it's just different and where you come up found, right? So my dad, Mel Taylor, was an original official guy in the game, right? And so it didn't matter to me if, if somebody in New York didn't recognize, somebody in Chicago didn't recognize, because I just felt like my father and the people that was around my father were the greatest people in the game. And then every city has a different perspective of that. Do you understand what I'm saying? So I just wanted to try to explain that to you guys as far as the game is concerned. Right. So so uh, the players ball, that situation was a very popular thing about a Chicago area. Right. And other places, too. But I'm saying that area. Right. But in the West Coast, it wasn't something that people was was, you know, something that they were looking upon as an official thing to do. Right. So just it's just so many different layers, so many different levels of of what we might consider you know, the game. It's just so many different, so many different perspectives, you know? And I remember when I was in Frisco and, um, you know, people would say, you know, uh, there are certain tracks over there in Frisco, right? So you might be over there, down over there. And where I was on was Gary, which is called, you know, supposed to be the exclusive track. All the girls there, they dress real proper. They might have you know, uh, Chanel suits on and, and, and yada, yada, yada. Right. And then you might go a block or so up the street to Taylor and it was kind of more grimy. Right. So the grimier girls who, who, who they wouldn't come down to the Gary area. Right. Because they're not going to get no action because all the girls over there are, 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 you know, are, you know, upper scale, sort of speak, quote unquote. Right. So it's just different. It's just different. Um, perspectives on the lifestyle when the, when the Hughes brothers when we talked about American pimp you know and when they hired me I told them you know I what I'm going to do is give you a, a depiction of the game from different perspectives different philosophies on the game you know different philosophies so so you we had to show different individuals at different levels in the game different mindsets right so like when I was in the game, um, you know, I never drink or smoke. It wasn't something that, you know, was promoted to me as something that was slick and cool from from the from the background that I come from. Right. It was kind of looked down upon. Right. But what was elevated is, you know, uh, you know, um, intellectualism. Right. So you want to. So the guys that come up out of the background for my father what was elevated there was, you know, uh, being a Renaissance man, being well-rounded about many things. It was sophistication. It was class. Right. But there are other guys in the game that they didn't elevate that stuff. It was kind of more, quote unquote, grimier. You see what I'm saying? And they might have looked down upon somebody that thinks the game is finesse. Right. And and. But that's how I come up was was finesse and brilliance and intelligence. Right. It wasn't really the goon hand and, and the gorilla pimp, so to speak, because there's just different type of levels. Right. But somebody that didn't have that background or that information might have looked at what I come from. Right. And might have thought that that wasn't really pimping. That's just how crazy it is. Right. And so the people that I the background I come up out of might have looked at that over there and said that ain't really no pimping. <laughs> it's just crazy. You know what I'm saying? How that goes, right? A, a guy might have looked at me and because the way I maneuvered and moved based upon Mel Taylor and come up out of that background and what we elevated in the game, right? He might not have understood that it was the game. 
right? Because it, it might have been a level that it wasn't promoted in his environment, right? It just wasn't promoted. Yeah, man. So it's just it's just 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 a whole bunch of differences, just based upon uh, you know the area that you were raised and and what they promoted, and it's just different levels, man. It's just different levels. So uh, yeah, it's it's just you know this game is just yeah it's just really fascinating, man. And then so when you when you are intermingling and you're traveling across country and you are you know engaging with a different you know, these different characters that are in the game and from different cities and states. And, and, um, uh, I said this one about one of my first videos and I was talking about, um, when I was, um, in, a, a Clark County detention center way back in, what was that? Nineties or something like that. And, um, you know, I talked about this guy who was in the game and his name was Mac. We were both in jail together. Right. And Mac was like real cool, you know. I mean, he just was just so slick, and just the way he moved and the way he talked, it was so slick. And he was just, oh man, he was the coolest, slickest person in the world, right? So I pulled him to the side. I said, "Man, let me holler at you, Mac." I said, "Mac, man, let me tell you," said I said, "You see all that cool and all that slick conversation and the way you walk and the way you move." I said, "You see all that, Mac?" I says, man, that's really cutting you off from having some real money. And probably from the beginning, he probably didn't understand until I start breaking it down to him. And I start saying what I'm saying to you, man, is that, you know, see all that slick and cool stuff and all that. Right. What that does is allowing them to see you coming. See, I was brought up to never allow them to see me coming. Right. I didn't want them, me to be able to walk down the street and somebody to point out, oh man, there's a pimp because they can prepare for your strengths. So I was educated from Mel Taylor is don't never prepare anybody for your strengths. Don't never prepare nobody for your strength, right? So you got to camouflage your strength. So the things that I was taught is you see the squares run the world. And so my father taught me, you go learn about what squares are doing. You learn square mannerisms. You learn what they read, devour what they read. You learn all of their characteristics so that ultimately you and your camera and all the things that you develop as a strength are camouflaged. So they can't prepare for you, right? So you want to learn it to the point Right. That they see themselves in you. And so you are up around those type of individuals and they think you're just like them, but they don't understand the strength of the game that you have inside of you. So I was telling Mac, I said, you will never be able to have access to a certain levels because they'll lock the door on you before you even get access to the door because they'll see you coming a mile away. Because you letting them know who you are, right? And they identify, they know what that looks like, and they don't want that around them. So you, if you have a strength, you'll never be able to utilize it because they'll shut the door on you. Because you showing people who you are right from the beginning, right? So he might have had that promoted in the community of the game that he came up out of. But from Mel Taylor and from the individuals that come up out of that environment, we look down upon that, right? And so we were able to have access to a different type of environment and utilize our strengths within those environments. Hence, I was able to have access to a different level of money that Mac probably would never be able to have access to, right? So this is how I was taught. So when I'm explaining that there are certain places around the country that elevate and promote certain things and other people don't, that's how the game is. So you have this mix of individuals, right, that feel a sense of empowerment because of their environment. And they think that that's what pimping is. This is what pimping is. Right. And, and that's all they'll ever know unless somebody comes and starts like I did with Mac 
and explain to Mac all of what you're doing, Mac, that's unproductive energy. You know all that shit. You know about the slick talk. You know about how to move and be cool and slick. And you continuing to invest in that behavior is unproductive because you know that already. You need to learn how to master something else. Exercise your mind, grow in another area, right? So the area that you need to master and why it should give you incentive to master what I'm telling you to master is because those people run the world. So even though you might be looking at them as squares, you got to have another eye, a third eye and said they're squares, but there's something that they're doing that has some empowerment to that to it that allows them to run the world. So why don't you tap into that information and tap into that knowledge and then you mix that knowledge with your game, with your information and then you become unstoppable. That's what my dad would taught me. You know what I'm saying? He said, I want you to be unstoppable. Right. I want you to be able to communicate to anybody, anywhere, on any level. But in order for you to do that, you got to have an education about how these people move, how the people who run the world move. Right. And so a lot of times when I was in the game, because I had the characteristics of squares, you know what I'm saying? People that were in the game would see me and they would think, man, that, that, that guy's a square. <laughs> You know, Dre's a square, man. Right. And, and when I would hear of that, I would know I'm doing a great job. That's exactly because what happens is when you take on that persona of a square and you still got the strength of that lion, that game inside of you, what it does is it keep cats up off you. It keeps things up off you and they never can prepare for you. A female can't prepare for me. Because a female is going to look at me and just like the average cat up out the ghetto, he's going to think I'm a square and she's going to think I'm a square too. Right. And I've had this is why I was so successful. I've had an access back in the day when guys wouldn't have the access or success in dealing with strippers back then. Right. Because most of the strippers, if they seen a guy like Matt coming in, oh, and he's popping in and he's so slick and cool, they shutting down immediately because they, they know what he's about. But me, all they see is what I've educated myself on, right? The square perspective, the square persona, right? And so they don't shut down. And so now I got access at the raw female with this game because she, sh she didn't shut down anything. But the guy that's all slick and got a certain conversation and you know what I'm saying? He's speaking certain Ebonics and things of that nature. She didn't shut down because she know what he's about. You feel what I'm saying? So, yeah, this is how I grew up. This is, you see what I'm saying? These are the things that were elevated, you know, in, in my life when my father was teaching me and he was a master. Do you understand? So, yeah, man, that's, you know, and, and it allowed me also to be successful when I uh, did police accountability, right? And actually lead the country in police accountability. Right. Because I have said this before in one of my other lives, I said they thought they could beat me so easily because they thought that this guy was a pimp. Right. And so they always were trying to see the pimp and they could never see the pimp. They always were trying to see this pimp guy. Right. And then when I would get on TV or do debates or do anything like that, they didn't understand that my education wasn't being this slick, cool guy. That was inside of me. I didn't have to invest anything into that. My education was to learn everything about the square perspective of life and not just the square perspective of life, but the squares that conquer the world. Those were my interests. And so there were certain books that my father encouraged me to read about how they think. And so by the time that I had gotten to police accountability, I had mastered that world, their world, right? Right. I was a master over how they move, how they think, their mannerisms. And, and then it was me. It wasn't I wasn't putting it on. It became me. Right. So there was duality inside of me. There there is to this day duality inside of me because my natural disposition is a very calm, peaceful individual. That's my natural disposition. That's just who I am. 
but there's a lion inside of me. And you guys see through some of my videos, sometimes I release and you will see the lion come out. You will see that streak come out. You will see that hardcore. You will see you will see that come out. But my natural disposition is not that way. Do you understand what I'm saying? So, yeah, man. Um, somebody asked me which books. Um, I love my uh, I love games people play. I've off said this many times to people. I love games people play by Dr. Eric Byrne because it teaches transactional analysis. Right. Um, it's a very deep book and something you have to read many, 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 many times. And the books that I like reading is about thinkers. You know, right? How they think the, the thought process, the beauty of the mind is incredible. Right. Um, let me see. What is this? Why do I have Beijing? This guy is so distracted. Uh, that hairline crispy family. Yeah, this is not Beijing family. I don't know what you're talking about. But anyway, that's a distraction. So at any route, man. Um, um, so, so, you know, my, my continual investments, my continual investments, you know, was great thinker. So I like Dr. Eric Byrne because he's a, a, a psychologist and the way his mind works, and there were some things that he had said that I was able to utilize, you know, because I'm like a vacuum cleaner because I want to get information and get knowledge. And and so when I was a young, young guy, you know, I don't even know if I was a teenager yet, uh, 11, 12. And I started reading Dr. Byrne about transactional analysis, you know, about uh, give you a perfect illustration. Um, I've said this before. Uh, Dr. Byrne is talking about uh, two of his uh, clients that he has. And just for the sake of conversation, just say Mary and Martha are the name of the clients, right? And he says, um, he says, uh, Martha comes in one day and, um, you know, she's smoking a cigarette. And she says, Dr. Byrne. And, 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 and he says, uh, he says, yes, Martha. She says, you know what? And she's smoking her cigarette and she says, um, uh, you know, Dr. Byrne, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to stop smoking cigarettes next week. And she's smoking her cigarette. Right. And he says, and Mary comes in and um, Mary says, Dr. Byrne. And he says, uh, yes, Mary. She says, you know, I stopped smoking cigarettes last week. So what Dr. Byrne was explaining is that Martha was attempting to play a game. The book is called Games People Play, right? And he's talking about some of the sex games, mental games people play with themselves, right? He said Martha was attempting to play a game because she came in smoking a cigarette saying what she was going to do next week, right? And, and that's attempting to play a game because you're saying something without the evidence. When Mary came in, she said, Dr. Byrne, I stopped smoking cigarettes last week, well, which means she had the evidence. Right. So she wasn't playing a game with with herself. So what I did, I took that and I, I and, and I developed that as a part of my character about never saying something without the evidence. And that became a part of my, the makeup of who I am as a person. So now I don't say things without the evidence. And then I teach everybody around me if they're saying things and they haven't produced the evidence, then they are, are attempting to play a game. I got that from Dr. Byrne. I also like uh, James Allen, you know, as a man thinker. These are books I always tell people for years to read. Right. I love that book. It has some spiritual foundations to as a man thinketh, a powerful book. And I also like my father's favorite book, uh, um, uh, um, As a Man Thinketh, is by James Allen. Um, um, uh, I also like um, Sid Harther, my dad's favorite book. Right. And Sid Harther is by a man. Uh, the author is Herman Hess. Right. And I like Sid Harther because it's a man that's going on a self-discovery to find himself. Right. And he's trying to have different experiences of life. And it's something that you guys got to go check out. I love those books. I love Augmentina, uh, the greatest salesman in the world. I mean, these are all some psychological, uh, not psychological, but psychology, mind books, you know, very in-depth books. A lot of them, not very book, big books. Right. But I love them. My one of my favorite books also 
um, that my father, that's really popular in our family is, is a, a poetry book by uh, Walter Benton called This Is My Beloved. You know, and I know it, I can, I can quote the first, the first page verbatim because what my father would do is when I was young, like seven, eight years old, you know, he would want to show, show out, show me out to his friends. And so he would call me in to some of his, his, his partners. Right. And, 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 and so when he called me in, he would start saying, he would say, because hate is legislated. And I automatically knew that that was the cue. Right. And so when he would say, Andre, because hate is legislated, then I would say, written into the primer and the testaments, shot into our blood and vein like vaccine or vitamins, because our day is of time and hours and closes the clock hand upon us and black timeless night sucks us in like quicksand, receives us totally without a rain check, a parachute, a key to heaven or the long last look. I need love more than ever now. I need your love. I need love more than hope or money, wisdom, or drink because slow negative death withers the world and only yes can turn the tide because love has your face and your body and your arms are tender and your mouth is sweet and God has made no other eyes like yours. You rise out of sleep like a growing thing rises out of a garden soil. Two leaves part to be your lips, too tender. I mean, I can keep going on, right? But just because at a young age, I was he was giving me the information. I was devouring the information. Do you know what I'm saying? Very, very, very powerful. You know, maybe I want to share something with you guys to show you how important getting the information is at a very young age. And let me just show something, share something with you guys. You know what I'm saying? Um, let me share something with you guys real quick. That's real, real, real powerful, man. Real, real, real powerful. Let me see if I got it. Let me see if I got it here. Huh. Where's my thing at here, man? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's important that, you know, that, you know, at a young age that, you know, you begin to, you know, um, that you begin to expose your children to the information you know, I can't find it right now, but it's important that you begin to expose your children to the information. See, because when I was real, real, real young, man, um, my dad, you know, just start just start sharing with me and my comprehension. I was able to comprehend, you know, and by the time that I became a teenager, I had mastery over, quote unquote, the king's language and all this kind of thing. Right. And my mind expansion and, you know. So there, there are some things that you want to start very young, especially our children, right? To start giving them access to information, just like you're eating, make sure that your children are eating with you. You know, um, let me see, man, there was something I wanted to share with you guys that was so powerful to me this morning. Uh, let me see if I can find this damn thing, man. Damn. Uh, where is it at? Where is it at? Where is it at? Yeah, this thing is powerful, man. Others don't see you coming in the square world. Uh, video storage. Uh, share a video from your file. Yeah, this is what I want to do for whatever reason. It's not giving me access to that. What is going on here? Hold on, guys. Let me try to get this video for you guys. And I want to just kind of share, share something with you guys. It's so powerful, so impactful to me. So damn powerful. Um, come on, man. Where the hell is this thing at? Yeah, this is weird. I can't find this thing right now. For some reason, I can't find what I'm trying to show you because it'll bless you. It will bless your socks off. All files. Come on, man. Damn. Yeah, I can't find it right now. I'm going to have to come back to it, man. I'm going to have to come back to it because for whatever reason, I can't find it. For whatever reason, I can't find this thing, man. Damn. Yeah. At any rate, I'll come back to it, fellas. Kendall, thank you, man. So anyway... Um... 
let me let me let me ask a couple of these questions. Are there things that I'll put it up here? And if you guys want to come on, listen, I'll let you come on. Are there things that you still do to ensure others don't see you coming in the square world? Well, you know, I've pretty much now, you know, now. Um, hold on. Yeah. Now I have it's different now because everybody knows who I am now, pretty much. But my character is who my character is, you know, my character hasn't changed, you know, but um, now I am what I am. But on my way up and my guy straight to on my way up, you know, when I was developing and growing and trying to, you know, um, maneuver through life, then it was important that people didn't see me coming. Right. But I mean, the work that I've done, what I've done, who I am is, is visible before the whole world. So people know what I am right now. You know what I'm saying? And they have to respect it, right? Because of the things that I've been able to achieve with the information. So it's something for you to do, though, right now. Okay, let me see who's coming on. Oh, that's my guy, Israel. No video feed. That's my loved one there, boy. Man, it's been a minute, man. It's so good to see you, man. It's so good to see you, family. How you feeling? Hey, Dre, how's it going, man? Man, it's, it's well, man. How you doing, family? Hey, man, I'm blessed by the best. You know the rest. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You, you always <laughs> love me up when I see your face, family. I promise you, man. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. You know, uh, I was kind of listening to you talk, man, about, uh, you know, the game and mm -hmm. the different uh, perspectives that people have on it. Mm. And, you know, uh, like, Think what we're really talking about is is levels of consciousness right yeah and uh, what people call game on a certain level of consciousness is relative to the environment that they came up in and the, mm -hmm. the social circumstances that surrounded them and the level of information that was available to them right so when we talk about the game as it relates to players and pimps and hustlers that's a level of consciousness but that's not the highest level of consciousness. And right. it, it, it is being promoted as if it is the utopia uh, of, of consciousness that a person can reach. And if, that, if you reach that level, that you are somehow in an elevated state. And that's not it. It really has limitations because it's finite. And the highest level of consciousness is, is universal consciousness. You know, mm. and I had a mentor named Papa Mac. And Papa Mac, was, he was a player. He was in the game. His name was Ronnie Mac, right? And he um, he shot dope. But I mean, he was an artist. Like, he painted paintings. His paintings would sell for $10,000, $20,000, right? And he used to have a white white woman that was rich, wealthy. She would come and pick him up in the projects, right? In a Rolls Royce, man. You know? Mm -hmm. and, but, but he used to tell that universal consciousness. You want to be able to relate to human beings on different levels around the world. So wherever you go, you can be respected. You can be a, a person who can converse. You can be a person who can relate to anybody anywhere. And it was a top pimp here in Chicago whose name I'm not going to mention, you know, out of respect. But he said, if you took this particular guy out of his environment and you put him in an aristocratic setting, he would be like a fly on the wall. He would not know how to interact. He would not be able to converse on universal affairs, on world affairs, on politics, on finance, on philosophy. And see, this is what real game is, is when you reach that level where you can function all around the world, where you can interact with anybody, anywhere, on any level, at any particular time. That's social consciousness. But mm. beyond that is God consciousness and God mm -hmm. awareness. That's the highest level of quote unquote game that a person can ascribe to is connecting to the most high because the mm -hmm. game that you're going to get from connecting to the most high is infinite. There's no expiration date on it because there's no expiration date on God. Mm -hmm. You follow what I'm trying to say? Mm -hmm. yes, indeed. But, 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 but when you look at game from the street level, 
it's really a form of survival. Yeah. And it's a form of if I have a little more awareness than you, I can now manipulate you for my own personal gain. Mm, mm. But that's a that, that's a finite game. But when you play on an infinite level, you're not trying to manipulate someone for your benefit. You're uplifting them so that they can now uplift somebody else so that we can all win at the same time. Mm, mm, mm. I'm in 100% agreement with that. Let's parse that a little bit. I'm glad you brought that up. So, so the ultimate, like you said, the ultimate is the consciousness of the most high. Now, that seems real surface to the average person that might think about, well, because they might think about it in a religious perspective, right? Well, right. But so, so the consciousness of the most high, but what does that mean to me? The consciousness of the most high means to me that whatever I'm speaking to somebody, there are certain things that, that could never be included in that, right? And that means, I'm going to say some things right here. That means there could never be a 48 laws of power within me. That's right. Right. There could never be deceit. There could never be the purpose of using this high, this to manipulate, to hurt, to injure, to advance myself over somebody else in, in a means of deception, deceit, and trickery. Right. So that is the highest level of consciousness. Right. To me. There is a consciousness below that, that that white white people, not only white people, but many empires have used their information and knowledge to do the very opposite of what I said, the higher level of consciousness is. Right. So yeah. so if, if the dominant society uh, feels like they own the information through their Ivy leaves because the the backbone of America is its universities. So why? Because that's where the information that they that they hold, that they feel they hold, is given to their children to prepare their children to conquer the world for, for, for the future, right? So there's a certain amount of information and knowledge is why it costs you hundreds of hundreds of thousands of dollars to even be tapped into that information. But with that information and that knowledge, it has been used for banking, which 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 not only banking, but corporations and bankings and the like to subdue, right, to subdue the average people, to advance this people here. Uh, and that information and knowledge has been used for deception because you can use it for deception against against people who have no clue about this form of information. Right. So here. So here. So here's the issue here. Right. How can you influence somebody? Right. That sees the benefit of this type of knowledge and the benefit has been our conquering. The benefit has been our advancement. The benefits have been right. Uh, the future for our kids and our children. How do you influence somebody not to be that way? How do you influence somebody not to do that if all they have is the evidence of doing that with their knowledge, with their information, with their advantage over the average person? How do you influence that? I influence it by showing, this is my position now in the world. I influence it by showing that that elevated consciousness that we're talking about from the most high can not only surplant what they're doing, but easily conquer it. Because as long as they feel there is no foe, that they feel that there is that there is no competition to what they've done, it can continue for another million years. So what am I saying? In layman's terms, I am happy, not that my brother was killed, that devastated me, but I am happy that the Most High utilized that for me to have that direct conflict with that amount of information that I just spoke to you that uses those information to subdue populations. I am happy that he allowed me to use this enlightened, this the top information that come from the Most High to oppose it and easily slay it. Easily slay it. Because if I don't have anything that can oppose this, our people will only be influenced by this. 
They will only look to this. This would be the most important thing to them as we are right now. The bag, the this, the that. We want to be like them. And this. If you don't have anything over here that shows to be an upstanding individual, to be a fair individual, right? To not be a deceptive individual. If you don't show that there's power in that and there's enough power in that to subdue what they have been able to accomplish, our people will be lost forever. Our people will be lost forever. So that's my position today. I want to show the way the Most High has brought me. Even when I was in the game, I was not utilizing the information that he gave me with deceit. Somebody say, well, what you mean you wasn't using it with deceit? You was pimping. <laughs> yeah, but my mama was a hoe. My dad, my, my, the God chose me the womb he wanted me to come out. Why? Because he knew the condition of our people. He knew that if he's going to use anything to show how powerful he is, that he has to use such an adverse situation to make you believe in your situation, that no matter how far down you are, no matter what pit you're in, no matter how far you feel you've messed up, how far you are from what you might think the dominant society has, he had to bring such a ridiculous situation, elevate that situation and conquer what you worship, what you praise, what you look to. So that's where I'm, my position is right now, Israel. I'm yes, so the one thing I know about you, you will say some things and, and and just because of how how the depth of your information and your knowledge, it'll pull out of me something that would have yes, not sir. been pulled out of me from somebody else. <laughs> yes, sir. That's yes, sir. Why I love talking to you. You feel yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. And you know, and, and what we need though is we need to, uh, to give two perspectives, right? Of what we call game. Mm -hmm. and, and so because I see in the, in the ghetto and in the hood, a lot of young people, they've only bought into this perspective that these brothers with limited consciousness that were was in the game. Some of them still in the game and some of them, that's all that they know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But you can't build a civilization on that level of, of, of information. It's mm -hmm. finite information. Mm -hmm. You can't change laws with that level of information. You know, I was talking to a friend of mine and uh, we was talking about street gangs, you know, here in Chicago, it's a big gang, you know, a city, right? And he was telling me about this one gang leader and, you know, how down he was. And I said, what, what hospital did he build, bro? Mm. What, what, what school did he build? What institution did he build? You see? And so all that stuff that those brothers was doing, I'm not knocking them. I come from the streets. But that's not the, the epitome of game. The mm -hmm. epitome of game is class, finesse, insight, grace, empathy. See, th these are the signatures of, of game. You know, mm -hmm. respect, respect for yourself. The conversation that you have is, is, is an elevated conversation. You follow what I'm trying to say? I do. You know, and, and so so that's what, you know, I work with young people and that's what I try to instill in them, man. Going to the penitentiary is not a badge of honor, bro. Mm -hmm. A thinking man don't go to the penitentiary, man. Mm -hmm. If you that's really right. thinking, if you really, yeah, I went to the joint, but I was, my level of consciousness was not where it was now. If I could go back to my teenage years, I would be what they deem a square. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. like you said, the squares run the world. <laughs> yes, you follow what I'm saying? Yes. The squares make the world go round. Not the dude that's standing up talking, yeah, man, you know what I'm talking about, man. I laid my back down on the bro and I, I sent her out on the man. That's that's mm -hmm. buffoonery, man. Yeah, and we have yeah. to evolve from that. We have to evolve into statesmen. We have to evolve into ambassadors. We have to evolve into emperors and kings and queens and and those type of things, you know, the ancient, the Moors, right? The Moors ran the world at one time. Yeah, you know yeah. what I'm saying? I listen to classical music. People might mm -hmm. say, well, man, you know, you're a lame or a square. But classical music came from us, bro. Right. Opera came from us. All the highest sciences of etiquette and, you know, dining and all that came from us. But like, like you said in one of the video, we this is us pipping and all that is us in a fallen state away from the most high. 
That's right. That's right. You see, and when you connect back to the most high, that becomes child's play because he's going to give you the keys to the kingdom of the whole earth. Mm, 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 mm. And see, the, da the damage, the damage that the idea of, I say this often, especially in my classes, I say, because I don't, I, it's not that I'm picking on Christianity, no. Mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. what I must do is explain the damage of consciousness of what Christianity has done to our people. And I always explain it like this. I said, let me explain to you. I have a son. I love him. My son has a friend, right? Now, when my son has an issue, he comes to me without any trepidation. There are certain things that my son don't even think about. He doesn't think about, well, my dad helped me. That's, that, that's not even a thought, right? Because the help, the love, the faith is within our relationship already. It's really something very normal, right? So I said what Christianity has done, it has positioned us as strangers like my son's friend. Now, my son's friend can't come to me with that type of courage. He will come to me with trepidation because he doesn't have the relationship. He only has a perspective from a stranger. I don't have any confidence. If I go ask Mr. Taylor this, that, and the other, I'm not confident in the fact that, you know, that, that I'm going to get some help. Right. So when people say that you as a quote unquote Christian, you got to have faith. Well, that's very clear why you have to have faith, because if you're coming to the most high from a stranger's perspective without the confidence of relationship, then of course you got to have faith. But if one was to ask my son, do you have to have faith? It would be insulting to him. I don't even think about it. I go to my dad because I have a, I know that's my father. He loves me. And we, that's something that's not even thought about. So, so what I try to share with our people is that when you are coming before the most high as a stranger, you're missing such a major part. And that's how we've been taught. We are strangers, right? You're in the world without God. You are a Gentile. You are this, you are that. Now I know people might have a different perspective of that. I'm just saying what I teach. I don't teach that we're strangers. I teach that we are like my son is to me. So when you come before the most high, there's supposed to be something embedded in the relationship. So why do I say that? To let you know that there is a relationship beyond your consciousness of a stranger. And you should seek that relationship because my son doesn't have to have faith. In. He knows that is something embedded within our relationship. He knows beyond a shadow of a doubt, whatever situation he's in, his daddy coming to see about him, period. <laughs> <laughs> and that's how I come before the most high. You know yes, what I'm sir. saying? That's right. Yeah that's, yeah. that's the problem right there. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, and, and we function from yeah, and we function from that stranger perspective. You know, uh, we don't understand our connection to the most high. That you know, he is our father, that we we're not a stranger, that you know, the blessings can be bestowed upon us just for the asking. But there's a level. Yeah. You know, there, there are three things, Dre, uh, that when, when, when Yeshua walked the earth, when he was dealing with our people at that particular time, when people have been oppressed, right? When people have been uh, dehumanized, there are three things that they have to get rid of out of their consciousness for their consciousness to ascend to a higher level. The first one is unworthiness. Mm. It's a feeling of, I'm not worthy to to be connected to the creator. I'm not worthy to own a bank. I'm not worthy to create an educational institution. I'm not worthy to be a banker. I'm not, so therefore I have to relegate myself to the lower stratums of society and dark alleys in order to survive. Mm. They are worthy of that. I'm not worthy of that. Mm. You see, unworthiness, not feeling yeah. good enough inside of yourself. The second one is helplessness. Mm. And helplessness is when you look around you in your environment and you don't see anybody doing anything of a magnanimous nature. Mm. You don't see anybody doing anything that represents power, that represents opulence, that represents grace, that represents conquering. 
So you internalize your external environment, what you see outside of yourself, and then you feel helpless. And now mm. that unworthiness and that helplessness leads to another state called hopelessness. Ain't no way out from it. You know, I'm gonna tell. Can I tell you a quick story? Come on, bro. You, you, you I was, I was, I, I was, um, I was, I was in the penitentiary one time, and uh. It was some dudes down there and they was talking all this Rolls Royce driving, pimping, and then, you know, I'm standing on million dollar shit on the streets, right? I used to meditate when I was uh, in the penitentiary. And uh, when everybody would go out to the yard to lift weights and do what they, I would stay in my cell and I would just meditate and meditate and meditate. And I would consciously project my spirit out to the streets and I said, find me a job. When I come home, I want you to have this waiting for me. And so when I came home, April 6, 1989, July the 1st, I got a job working at the public aid office here in Chicago as a counselor, right? And I was going up against people that had master's degrees, bachelor's degrees, and so forth. I got the job. So one of the guys that was talking all this pimp talk and gangster talk, and I got Rolls Royce and all that, he was my client when I got the job. So when he saw me, he said, Israel, he said, man, how did you get this job working here? And you are ex-convict. Hmm. And I said, well, brother, that's, I'm not an ex-convict. That's the definition that they mm -hmm. have tried to put upon me. And if I buy into that definition, I'm going to sure. get the result of the fruits of the definition that they have given to me for me to have, which is nothing. Right. I said, man, right. I'm connected to the creator of the universe, man. The most high is my father. Can't no mm -hmm. label or definition keep my good from me. Mm -hmm. You see, and that's what we have to we have to get out of those three things, and we have to connect back to the Creator. And I traveled all over the United States, went to all the prestigious universities and colleges, and spoke as a guy that was in the penitentiary. Mm. And the people that was listening to me, I spoke at one college. The guy was like, "Where did you learn this at?" Well, I didn't learn it from you, obviously. Right, right, right. Because right, the Creator right. will give you knowledge that will confound the knowledge of the world but you have to seek his face and you have to let go of the vices and the false consciousness that you've been indoctrinated with to believe that you are this we are not gangsters and thugs and pimps we are actually the descendants of god himself right right that is so powerful man let me piggyback off that this is some of the things I talk about in class too. I said, okay, so in Genesis 15, the Most High says that to Abraham, your descendants will be taken into a foreign country that's not their own and be enslaved there for 400 years, treated horribly, right? So people always wonder, how is it with what you've gone through, right? Ex pimp or you know ex con or whatever. Right, right, right. <laughs> so I say, right. I said to all my brothers out there, let me explain this to you. I said I'm going to go back to what the Most High said to Abraham, that your descendants will be in a foreign, be taken into a foreign country that's not their own and enslaved there for 400 years. I said I believe that's us. I said so. Let me think. Let me let me say something to you. I said the reason why. I don't look at myself like they look at me because the color of my skin has criminalized me here. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. I said, you know why I don't? I said, because I look at myself and I identify myself with how the most high identified me to Abraham. I said, I said, now watch this. I said, now bring your whole mind. I said, now look what the most high said to Abraham about us, your descendants, will be taken into a foreign country that's not their own and be enslaved there for 400 years. That's what he said, your descendants. I said, so he said that they would be enslaved there. That's the worst case scenario. I said, I would have preferred the most high told Abraham that they would be pimps there. I would prefer that the most high would have said, well, they would be drug dealers there. But he said the worst case scenario, that they would be enslaved there. Mm -hmm. Because underneath enslavement is all that other stuff. 
The worst no. case that any human could be into is enslavement. And that's what the Most High said, that the descendants would be enslaved there. I said I would have preferred that he said they was pimps there or that they was drug dealers there, not enslaved. Because that's the worst case scenario. That's right. I said when the Most High is looking at you, I said, you don't look at yourself like that. I said, but all he see is a descendant. That's right. I said, all he sees is a descendant. I said, your problem is you don't see yourself as a descendant. That's right. But if you understood that you are a descendant, no matter what vice that you find yourself in, it's not a deep enough pit that you can't come up out of because he's already covered your device with your enslavement. That's right. He's already said your worst case scenario within this country. I said, I would have rather him said there was pimps there, there was drug dealers there, there were hustlers there. I prefer that. Right. But he said they would be enslaved there, the worst case scenario. That's right. So when I look at myself, even though the court said this, the white folks said this, that people said this, you know what I said? <laughs> I am, Lord, I'm, the, I'm the descendant. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. You know yeah. what I'm saying? That's right. And it's it's a beautiful thing, my brother. And I, I'm really enjoying this show uh, because you really are getting into the nuts and bolts of it. Uh, when, when you talk about the different levels, like with, with, with Mel Taylor, you know, that that level of the game, you know, that was Renaissance man. You, you follow what I'm saying? Intellectualism, you know, charisma, grace. You have different levels and people are just pushing one dimension of this here thing. You follow what right. I'm saying? And you're given a well-rounded perspective. And that's why you have been able to do the magnificent things that you've done because you came from a school that elevated grace, that elevated manhood, that elevated intellectualism, that elevated culture and refinement. Because that's what runs the world and what your father, in my eyes, was preparing you for. He was preparing you for something deeper than what he knew you was going to get into. Mm -hmm. He was giving you the exit strategy. You know, he knew that you was going to be in the game because you was around the game. But he mm -hmm. gave you something that would take you far beyond the game, you know, into the halls of higher learning, into mm -hmm. the halls of statesmanship, into the halls of government, into the mm -hmm. halls of being renowned. That is what we actually are. And that's where we should be. And, you know, God bless Kevin Samuels. He made a video. And he said, black man, you deserve to be there, too. Mm. You deserve to be there. You deserve to be in the corporations. You deserve to be an investment banker. You deserve to be a world traveler. Some of these people that's on the internet pushing all this game, they ain't never been outside their city, man. That's right. They ain't been to Austria. They ain't been to Venice. That's right. You, know, you understand what I'm talking about? It's yeah. a big world out here. And when you mm -hmm. connect to the creator, he will open this world up wide open. He'll give you all of the resources, the social capital, which means the people in, in particular places. And he'll give that to you and he will guide you so that you can now uplift yourself and your people. Mm. Mm. And that's what game is at the end. It's about how much you can help other people. Yes. Not how much you can extract from them, how slick you can be. How much can you help someone who's down? How much can you uplift someone? How respectful can you be to the elders? How much guidance can you give to young people? How much can you protect your women? You see? And so that's the level I'm on now of my consciousness. And mm. it's a continuous evolution. You know, there's an African proverb that says a day that you live and didn't learn is a day that you didn't live. Mm. Mm -hmm. You know, and our people that's in the game, as we call it, they've been tight cast. They don't know how to play any other role but that role. But there are multidimensional roles in life for you to play. Mm-hmm. You follow what I'm trying to say? Yeah, and you yeah, can transition yeah. to that to that next role at any time, but you have to let go of what you have now because two things can't occupy the same space at the same time. You got uh -huh. to let go of the lower in order for you to receive the higher. Mm -hmm. So that's it, man. I don't want to, you know, I don't want to hog up the uh, time. You, you know, know what I'm saying? Mean? Mean? We, we're giving it to the people because that's what we're here for. Yes, sir. You know what yeah, yeah, that's yeah, what yeah. Here for, man. And sure. and and you know what happens, Dre, is once you start really seeking the Most High's face, right? Something will come into your life called synchronicity. Mm -hmm. Synchronicity is 
is is is is is is ongoing good. The the whole world, the everything, your environment will become your advisor, will become your teacher. You'll be somewhere, you'll be thinking about something, and you'll see something on a license plate, or you'll see something on a billboard, or somebody will come up to you and say something to you. I remember uh, one time when I was young, I had went in a building, and I had uh I had stole a briefcase, right? And I went out and I looked in the briefcase. I was like, oh, man, I done came up. But the thing that was in the briefcase was some papers and a book. And the book was entitled The Key to Yourself. It mm. was by Bernice Bloodworth, right? I have this, not the same copy. I, I took the briefcase back, you know, and put it back where I got it from. But I kept the book, right? Because I've been a reader all my life. And the first chapter in the book was called The Law of Thought. And it said that thinkers rule the world. They always have and they always will. And it says the difference between people is the difference in their thought process. What mm -hmm. you have acknowledged as true in your world within is merely a reflection of what you see in your world without. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the first thing that you have to do is you have to change the perspective of your world within and then the world without automatically becomes a reflection of what you've changed it to. Mm hmm. I say something like, I said, your life is an extension of your complaint. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, your life is an extension of your complaint. Yes, you know? sir. And, and, you know, I think, I think, and I always constantly say all the time that I'm only here for the remnant, right? Be, and, and, and the reason why that's something that I, I, I constantly put out there is because I want people to know, listen, everybody, this ain't for everybody. That's the reality, you know? And, and there's a scripture that says, whomsoever will, uh, whomsoever will receive the information. In other words, there's a connotation with that line, whomsoever will, the connotation is, I already know everybody will not. So whomsoever will, right? whomsoever will. So that's what yes, I'm under, whomsoever. Who who can get it? Because right. I know this doesn't take a lot of us. It just takes a remnant. It just takes a remnant, right? I am that's confident right. in the fact that whoever gets it, because one thing I know, when you know too, we both know, that if there was some girls twerking, that it would get the majority of our men's attention. That's right. right? Videos will come a million and this, that, and the other. And that's why I always tell people, I'm not into numbers. That's right. Explain this quick. I've never been into numbers. The most high is not into numbers, right? When people used to say to me, Dre, you could do this, this, and this to grow your pay, I would say it's really hard for me to 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 for my mind to work that way, right? It's like, let me I'm bouncing around because I want to go here too. When I first started police accountability, I remember my nephew said, um, you know, we could do this, this, and this, you know, to get this. And I said, I said, that's problem, nephew, because the moment I go out of outside of my primary intent for doing what I'm doing, it becomes something else. The primary intent has to be pure. Right. I don't want to go do this, this and then it'd be the this that becomes the primary intent. That's right. You understand what I'm saying? So. Yes, I, so what I was telling folks is that. I done my greatest work without a large social media, uh, 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 without large so social media followers or all that. You know what I'm saying? The Most High doesn't need me to have a million social media subscribers and all that for Him to do what He's going to do in my life. That's right. I'm not connected to that. I'm not. Right. I'm not beholden to that. That doesn't make me feel powerful because right. I'm not in numbers. It's it's it's. It's more valuable to me to have an individual like me and you on here right now than to have a million individuals on here for entertainment. I'm unconcerned about that. The yes, value sir. of who you are, what you give us, what you project, who you are as a man, a black man, the value of that, there is no limitations as far as I'm concerned to how I value that. You know what I'm saying? That's right. That means thing in the world to me. So if I could have 500 of us, I'm good. That's right. God might give me more, but I'm <laughs> just telling you how I feel about it. Right? Yes, sir. If I right. could have 500 or 5,000, 
Man, I used to always say, Lord, if you just give me 5,000, we could easily take the world because that's how my mind works. I'm always thinking about the value of individuals that understand who they are, like you said earlier, who to be towards our people, who to be towards our women. You know what I'm saying? But it's so funny, man, that I released a video, I think yesterday, right, uh, on my mm -hmm. Instagram. And it's a video, you know, me talking about a woman and this, that and the other, because I have duality inside of me. The most high wanted me to because he knew the condition that our people was going to be in. That's, that's so right. there's a duality in me. Right. There is street in me. Right. Right. That's not that's not my normal makeup, though. I don't walk around like that. Right. I walk yes. around like a very peaceful, kind, engaging individual. I love that. But mm -hmm. there's a lion inside of me as well. That's right. And he knew that the lion was necessary because of the condition of our people. Some people need the lion. So yesterday the video was the lion. Okay. But it's crazy how majority of the people of our people gravitate to the lion. They don't want to gravitate to the tension, to the teachings. They don't want to gravitate to the, the in-depth teaching. They are gravitate to the lion. They, are lo they love that type of stuff. You know, if I'm talking about the broad this and how to be a man, <laughs> this and the other, woo, woo, boy, that thing could get thousands of thousands of views. Yes, sir. I'm sitting down having a conversation like this with you, right? It won't reach the same type of potential, and that right. is the condition of our people. Yeah, that's a yeah. trap. Yeah, that's a trap. And you know, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna leave on this note. You know, uh, where I started from and where you was talking about game, right? You know, I was taught that if you can see it, it ain't game. Mm, mm. I'm going to say that one more time. If you can see it, it ain't game. You don't see game. You feel game. Mm. You follow what I'm trying to say? Yeah, like, yeah. you don't, like, 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 uh, you don't see who runs the world. You mm -hmm. don't even know who they are. I mean, we say right. that, that Illuminati, but give me some specific names of some specific people. You see mm. representatives. But the real people that's got real power and real game, if they walk past you on the street, you wouldn't even know who they were, bro. Mm -mm, mm -mm. People that have ultra wealth and ultra power, if they walk past you on the streets, you would not even know who they were. Very honest. Because they don't they, they don't they don't want to be known. Mm -mm. They don't want to be seen. You follow what I'm saying? Boy, do I. When you study wealthy people, wealthy people that have real wealth, they, they are not ostentatious. Mm -mm, mm -mm. They're very simple. Right. Because they're secure within themselves. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, but we mm -hmm. want to flaunt every time. We want to put all our business. I got the road. I got the money. Here you go. Brother, that's, that's insecurity, man. Sure, sure. People that got power don't flaunt what they got. Mm-hmm. Like being a tough guy, you know, I work with young men and, you know, they teenagers, they think they hard because they come up in the hood and they, you know, some of them might have a body, their uncles have bodies. I'm like, bro, they could take five white boys, just five. They could drop them off in any major black community and they could destroy that, that community. They could destroy yeah. that community within a matter of days, man. Yeah, yeah. You follow what I'm saying? You got white boys that look like Forrest Gump, man, and they will kill you within a blink of an eye. You won't even know yeah. you're dead, man. True, see, so because it ain't about being tough. You see, the, the the toughness is 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 your ability to first overcome the negativity in yourself. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's being a tough guy. A tough guy is yeah. being able to stand on your own, irrespective of what your homies think about you. <laughs> being a tough guy is being able to latch on to righteousness when you know right is right and when wrong is wrong. Mm. Being tough is being able to give up that old version of yourself for the new version that's waiting for you. Beautiful. That's being tough, man. You follow mm. what I'm trying to say? Man, man. All that other, all that other stuff is just, you know, smoking mirrors, man. You just man. running from yourself. You just hide from yourself. You trying to impress somebody. You know, but anyway, man, it's always a pleasure, Dre. You know, man, I, this is a good. I mean, I really, man, I was listening before I called in, man, and you 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 giving it to him, my brother. You giving it to him, man. And 
you know, man. hey man, I love you, man. You one of the greats, bro. You man, follow I what I'm you, saying? Man. I love you, man. You know, uh, yeah, yeah, man. I don't, I don't, I don't honor a lot of people, man. You know, I done seen all kind of characters, man, and a lot of chumps I used to look up to when I was in the streets. I look at them today, man. I'm like, you was uh, this lane right here. Mm. You understand what I'm trying to say? So it's like we we suffer from the blind leading the blind, and in the valley of the blind, the one eyed man is king. So if a mm. person have a little more knowledge than you, they're a little tougher than you, a little more bolder than you. You know, they become the leader. You follow me? Yeah. But but the, ultimately, we have to look to the Creator. That is the leader of everybody, mm, mm, because mm. He gives us the breath that we breathe. He gives us the life that we have. He makes the sunshine. Don't no man do that. So I don't. You don't honor man. You you have to honor mm. the Creator, and the Creator will give you the infinite wisdom that you have, so that we can actually transform our families, ourselves, and ultimately we can transform the world. And that's what real gain is: transformation. Thank you, man, for just giving us, every time you come on here, man, just thank you for just giving us life, because that's exactly what you're giving us, is life. All right, man. Yes, sir. Hey, man. Have, yes, sir. <laughs> I love you, man. Thank All you, man. Life. Okay. All right. Peace, Peace and love. Mm -hmm. All right. Wow. Wow. Well, that is real. So incredible, man. Goodness gracious, man. What's up, Mike? A hey. whole lot of great, a whole lot of great Godfather. Yeah, man, yeah. man, Israel, Israel, man, Israel, hey, man, Israel put it down, you. man. But yeah, he, uh, he, I want to strong boy. Go, come on though. Yeah, Let's yeah. I um, uh, I want to, man. First of all, thanks to brother Israel. Then, uh, um, I want to talk about, man. I will, I will confess, man. I when I was younger. I had seen American Pimp and I would see stuff and I just, I would emulate and stuff, man. I would model this stuff. And now I just look like, like, man, like, I guess that was just, a, I guess that was just phase. You thought that was something cool or whatever. But now I'm like, that man, just being, being, being a student of yours, it's like, hold on. That was, that was fire. That was what, what, what I was seeing was, was fire from what you telling us the game was, right? But, right. <laughs> um, you know, that's that. But then a lot of times I, I, I really keep to myself, Godfather. I really do, you know, just because that's just my style. I grew up, I'm an only child. So, you know, I've had homies, I had friends, but, you know, for the most part, it, 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 from, I guess, from about from 25 until now, you know, I just really do, I just, mostly keep to myself i you know i be you know i work work out and and i hit the library but anyway um i just i, I my thing is i go like man you know i, I be like well is these these thoughts you know some of the stuff the way i look at the world is it unique to me you know am i am i too much of a loner this this and that but i just listening to you all talk i'm like hell no Hell no. <laughs> the real, the real, the, 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 the breakthrough is no, you just, you just don't have a, a, a lot of time and energy for stuff that ain't in alignment with what you believe in and what you find important. And sometimes that can, that can be a challenge because you know, you just, you can't go around in the world like an island. When I listen to y'all and I hear y'all talk, it's like, hold on. I've been thinking like this for a long time now. Wow. Wow. And to wow. hear and to, 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 to be associated with somebody of your stature saying this kind of stuff that I've been thinking about for years. Wow. I'm like, it's wow. Like, hold on. Like, powerful. I don't powerful, Mike. Yeah, I don't feel, you know, I don't feel like, hold on, I don't, I don't feel like I'm just, I'm just so far away just because I'm a square and, you know, y'all was in the game. Like, hold on, what, what y'all saying is, is pretty much square. Not all the way, <laughs> but it's, it's mostly a who I am day in and day out. Right, right. You know, right, right. You know, I just keep it to myself. But my question to you then is in the context of, of so many, so many brothers, uh, how important do you feel that is for 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 brothers, especially young brothers, to be self aware and honor their honor their uniqueness, no matter what? Mike, thank you for the question, family, and thank you for being a remnant member and your support. Um, you know, I could 
parse that in so many different ways because the question all depends on your level of consciousness, right? Your level of consciousness of what that means to the individual. You know what I'm saying? Because Israel and I were just talking about, you know, in essence, you are your consciousness. That's who you are, your consciousness, right? So you've been thinking this way for a long time and you've probably had people around you that could not relate because they didn't have your level of consciousness. Their level of consciousness and their value stemmed around what they were conscious of, right? They couldn't even understand your perspective because that was your level of consciousness. Your level of consciousness has brought you your enlightenment, right? And that enlightenment shows that I don't need to have a whole bunch of people around me, right? So it's all consciousness. What I'm trying to work on right now with our people is that consciousness that you have, that you said you've been having, and so much so that you felt, man, there's something wrong with me because you wouldn't hear people out there talking, believing what you believe, feeling like you were feeling, and it made you feel like, God dang, man, there's something wrong with me. But no, Mike, it wasn't nothing wrong with you, man. Let me tell you what it is. Do you know that anything that's worth something is always hidden away. Mm. The most valuable things are always hidden away, family. The most high just hid you away. <laughs> he just hid you away, man. You know? Wow. Man, I just wanted to get that to you, man. He just hid you, you away, man. Man. Woo! Yeah, yeah, so that's 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 thank thank you, Godfather. That's it for me. I'm gonna sit back and listen for however right. long this lasts, and then we and then we gonna we gonna do it we gonna do it again tomorrow at seven yes, Pacific. Will. I I will yes. admit, man. I a lot of times I start off I start off at because it's with seven out there is nine here in Chicago. Right, right. And a lot of times, man. Wait, way I be now, man. Maybe about sometimes earlier, but probably by about ten o'clock ten o'clock central. I'm just I'm sleep. I bet, I bet. But the good thing is you can come and watch it anytime you're ready. It's there. Right, yeah. That's that's, that's the lesson. benefit. So I'm gonna let somebody else get some. Thank okay, you, Godfather. Bye. Love you, man. Love you too. All right, one. My brother. Uh let me see this here. Uh amigo, any advice for someone that is also a lot solo in this journey? and raised by a single mom. Um, amigo, can you kind of unpack the specific thing that you're asking? Because I have a lot of advice on a lot of different things, right? So if there's a specific thing that you want to ask, I sure would like to know that, you know? But my advice is, is the information, you know? Um, are, are, you in, are you in the classes? Because if you're not, you should get into classes. You know, it's very important because there is a smorgasbord of information in those classes. Once you join, I don't keep you from all the classes and the lessons that 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 you hadn't seen before. Everything is there for you. I mean, I mean, boy, I don't even know how many we've done, but I'm saying it's it's got to be. Sheesh, that's a lot. Let me just say that. So once you are in the class, you got access to all that information and and, you know, because a lot of times the questions that you have require more than just a, a simple conversation. Right. And in the classrooms, there are classes that we've taught on so many different subjects. You can go in there like a library and eat as much as you want to eat, as much as you want to eat. So I would just advise you, fam, amigo, to get into the class, man. And when, when, when you, our class is on, on YouTube is Mondays and Fridays at 7 p.m. West Coast time, Pacific Standard Time. And you have to use a computer or a laptop to join. For whatever reason, that's how YouTube does it. You can watch on your, your phone once you join. But in order for you to join, you got to use a laptop or a computer to join. So that's what I would advise for you to do, family. Yeah. Let me see some of these other questions. Uh, let me see some of these other questions that we got down here. Uh, Demi, what's up, family? Okay. Let's keep it positive. 
Uh, okay, if anybody want to come on, you can come on. Join it right on YouTube. Um, right by subscribe, there's a join button, but you got to use your laptop or your computer and you can join. Okay, let me just put this up. Info specialist, how do you know when you have met your wife? I'm still looking for mine. Um, so again, if say, say, say I was mentoring you and you asked me that question, right? I would want to know what your perspective of a wife was. Because I would like to know what your perspective of a wife was because I want to make sure if your perspective is appropriate, you know, because if your perspective of a wife was something that I feel like it's going to be problematic or I want to give you some enlightenment of why that might be challenging for you to think that's what a wife is. Right. Then I would have to talk to you about that. Right. So sometimes people ask a question, but it's much deeper than just the surface part of it. How do I know when I've met when you've met your wife? Well, what do you consider a wife? Right. Because then I would start there. If I was mentoring you, I would start there. Let's see this here. That's my dude, Jobless. How do I maintain my grounding when the old ways of thinking try to overtake me? Um, jobless man. So say somebody is 30 years old, right? And you have thought the way you thought for 30 years, right? And then say you start getting the information and you've gotten the information for three, four months, right? So I don't want you to think that it's such an exotic thing. Exotic means rare that you're going to have the challenge because people are predisposed to go back to a behavior that they're comfortable with, right? This is why the continual information, the repetition of the information is so important, right? Because what happens is, what does the information do, right? Say an old situation happens, right? So when you're in that comfort zone of who you've been for 30 years, you're going to have a reaction to that old situation, well, how do you how do you change that? Well, say you got new information and you've been working on this new information and receiving this new information for three months. Right. So what you learn to do is pull out of you the new information to deal with the old problem. It is the new information that allows you to overcome the old problem. But if you don't have any new information going inside of you, then what's going to happen? You're going to be predisposed to go back to what has governed your life for 30 years. So that's easy to see, right? That's why maybe some people come to the class and they get the information, they fire it up and they feel like they got it. No, you don't got it. You have to continue within it because the world continues to promote their ideas and their visions and their indoctrinations 24 seven. So you gotta have the information, right? Continually put inside of you, hold on BC, continually put inside of you, right, to pull it out, to be able to combat that old way of thinking, that old reaction. It's only new information that gives you the power to deal with that. I hope that helped, loved one. BC, what's up with it, fam? How you doing, sir? Appreciate you I'm having well. me on. How you feeling? Everything smooth, man. Can't complain. Beautiful, beautiful. I woke us up today, you know what I'm saying? I'm just, man, I, I you know, I woke up and I said a long prayer. And um, I, I admit, you know what I'm saying, with you as my witness, I haven't been praying like that lately. You know what I'm saying? I was, you know, also a remnant member and, you know, I fell upon hard times. So, you know, on, on some, you know, like 100 percent realness, you know what I'm saying? Like um, I want to get back to the classroom, you know what I'm saying? But, you know, uh, just working things, sorting things out right now. And I said a prayer to God. And, you know, I really feel like, you know, I'm, I'm going to see a breakthrough very soon. So, mm, yeah, that's you know, I, I, I still feel blessed. You know what I'm saying? Even, even, you know, in the midst of everything that's going on, you know what I'm saying? I still feel great. Man, that's what's up. That's what's up. Yeah, man. Uh, 
the most high ain't got no problem blessing you, you know, to uh to get what you need to get, man. You know, it's just the problem is is when he blesses, you gotta make sure you utilize it for what you ask him for. <laughs> Cause sometimes you can get the blessing and then you'd be like, oh man, I'm gonna go do this. And then you know the Lord will bless you specifically for you to be able to do a particular thing. But that's us, that's just us as human beings. So just keep that in the back of your mind, BC. When whenever the blessing is, you know, um, that um that you utilize it for what you ask it for. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. What else been going on? You got a particular question? Yes. Yeah, so um I'm I'm a you know musician. I'm a you know lifetime musician. I've been making beats and and you know uh just doing music since forever. You feel me? Like, you know, I grew up in a musical family. I got family who, you know, uh do different artist mediums and everything like that. But um with with my artistry in particular you know, I've been, you know, now that I do have, you know, some information, I wouldn't say I have all the information, you know what I'm saying? But now that, you know, um, I've been blessed, you know, with some game, um, not not to say that I wasn't gamed up, you know, prior to, you know, any of this, but, you know, now that my game is, you know, somewhat elevated, you know what I'm saying? Sure, due, sure. To, due to listening to, you know, um, folks yeah, like nice. you who, who know what's up, you know what I'm saying? It's mm -hmm. like, I'm really trying to sort out my message because God, you know, I feel like, you know, gave me a task as far as, you know, um, inspiring people. Mm. And my whole thing is, you know, I'm, I'm trying my best, you know, to, you know, I still don't have it all together, <laughs> you feel me, but I'm still trying my best to figure out, you know, the best message I could put out there to the people that do, you know, look up to me. And I, and I don't exalt myself like that, but, you know, there is, you know, uh, younger folks and, and, you know, individuals that I come up with, you know, that, that really look up to me. And it's like, I want to be the best, you know, person that I could be, you know, while at the same time, you know, fixing what I need to fix in my own life. You know what I'm saying? My, my shortcomings and iniquities, but I also want to help others, you know what I'm saying, in the process. Man, that's so, what's up. It's like, I'm, I'm, I'm still trying to sort out the message. And it's like, with, with the game and the knowledge, you know, uh, you said that we do have a responsibility to uphold, you know, and um, we can't just be out here living all reckless and, and acting a fool and stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? But um, more, more of the question that I do have is, um, you know, what what can what, what do you feel like a rapper nowadays or an artist, you know, should be talking about instead of, you know, subjects we just hear too many like music, like sliding on the ops and, you know, I, you know, I'm doing this, I'm doing that. You know what I'm saying? But it's just like what do you feel like the messages that today's youth need to hear that I can relate to, to the people that are watching me because Ooh. I do watch you, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. 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 It's yeah. Like, um, yeah. That's, that's my, that's my question. I'm not going to take too much time. I think, I think BC man, I think that, um, that you have to be comfortable with, you know, you got to be comfortable with all of the the complexities with inside of you, because I know there's a lot. There's a lot inside of me. You know what I'm saying? There's a lot of complexities that you have. You have somebody said on here that it looks like he's having a problem with duality. You know what I'm saying? Because sometimes I remember when I used to talk to sinful and he was having a problem because he comes up out of the church. Right. And he was just having a problem with that with that conviction of what church has taught him about who he thought he was and, and all this. And I said that the best way out is through, right? Sometimes you got to go through a situation. You have to know who you are first, right? Because I see that you grounded, you got a good heart, right? And so you are dealing with a young generation right now and you got to be wise in how you are trying to reach them, right? So sometimes it might take a hook and maybe that hook might not be what somebody else might think is cool, but you got to know your purpose and your reason why you did what you did. I'm doing this because I know that this is what they listen to. This is what is getting their attention because I got some place to, to take them to. Okay. I got some place to lead them to, but you got to catch a fish before you clean it. Hmm. You feel what I'm saying? So you already know your generation. You know what they what they what 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 they what they listening to. You know, and so sometimes you got to be smart. But it's your primary intent that you got to always guard. 
Your primary intent is what you just told me. You know, how can I reach them? Well, if you want to reach them, you're going to have to be smart. You know, what do you think is going to reach them? And then when you reach them, you got some place to take them. Right. Because. You know who you are as a person. You got to be comfortable with that. That's got to be solid to you. You got to believe that that can never be swayed. I'm going to be 100. I'm, I'm, you know, this is the most high first. Or, you know who you are as a person. Okay. But, but 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 Lord. Apostle Paul said, I became as all men so that thereby I might reach some. Hmm. Sometimes you got to put a hook out there, you know, like me. Perfect illustration. I, I left doing police accountability and start doing some stuff in the music. Why? People stop, man, he promoting pimping again. I don't matter what they think. I need to get their attention. It's my life. I live that life. I can speak about my testimony. I don't care what them people think about me. I know what my purpose is. I know I got some place to lead them. So that's what I'm saying to you. You got to be comfortable with yourself, but you know you also got to be smart enough to know how to reach them. Facts. And when you reach them, then you got to take them someplace. Yes, indeed. That's the strategy, baby. I, I don't want to take too much of your time, but you you definitely inspired me. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, uh, you know, I was doing, you know, I'm not even going to go into, you know, what I was doing, you know, moving and grooving through the streets. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, you took I feel like you and people like sinful really and, and freeze. You know, I got to mm -hmm. give acknowledgement where, where acknowledgement is due. But. I feel like you three really took me out of, you know, what I was doing, you know, with, with that. And y'all got me focused on the creativity. And it's like, man, just just to be able to be on this live right now and, and to express this to you right now, it's, it's an honor and a, and a privilege. Man, and so, it's beautiful, man. I, 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 I appreciate y'all. I want you to release your measure because I trust in your heart and I trust in the purity of your desires that you have for the people that you know need to be reached. I trust that. Now, since we got that locked down. Go release your measure and go out there and reach your people. You know what to do. Yes, indeed. Yeah. Appreciate okay, you. Man. All right. 100. All right. What we, what we doing around here? What we doing around here? We got a couple more minutes. Let me see. If you want to come on, let me see. Yeah, man. You know, you just want to try to keep it real with people, man. You know, you you you, you got to keep it real with people in that you got to empower them and who they know that they really are, not what, what life tries to tell you you are. You know, let me say this, man. What the information allows, this is a perfect illustration of what the information does for you, right? So say a situation happens, right? And and it looks like it's a problem, right? So so in your mind, you believe that it's a problem. And so everything in your body lines up to what your mind believes. What the information does is it allows you to look at that same thing that somebody else have accepted that it's a problem. Right. And then what I teach in the class is, is that when a situation comes, it's not coming to destroy me. It's coming for me to conquer it or me to, or for me to learn something through. So the fact that you can look at something that the average person will perceive as a problem, the fact that your mind would first be able to say, well, wait a minute, it's not coming to conquer me. It's not coming to hurt me, harm me, kill me. So it's coming for me to conquer it or for me to learn something through the fact that you can go outside of what the average person will view the thing as as a problem, because when the average person sees it, all they see is a problem. There's nothing else that they're thinking about this situation. And then the thing begins to be a self-fulfilling prophecy. It begins to be self-fulfilling because they've accepted it as a problem. When the feds came against me, I could have said this is only a problem. But the information allowed me to even see something that tragic as either something for me to conquer or for me to learn something through, but not to destroy me. 
That's what the information does. And then we continue to reaffirm that so that your mind begin to think about life in a whole different, completely different way. Why other class is necessary? Because you have been who you are for 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 years. And you have locked yourself into the indoctrination of what they told you to think life is. And you've accepted that. So that's what life has become to you. I teach you to reject what they've taught you. To oppose what they taught you. If they said that the only way you could be happy is with the American dream, I teach you to oppose that. That's a lie. The fact that you can oppose what the average person accepts puts you into a different level of consciousness automatically. It puts you in a different sphere, a different space of consciousness. If you could look at something and think something other than what they taught you to think of it as, well, this is a problem. Right. The fact that you can say, no, this is not a problem. It don't have to be a problem. It could be something that I'm supposed to go conquer. Right. And so portals open up that was never opened up to you before. So this is what I teach you how to open those things up in you that are blind, that are dead in you. So that everything around you begins to shift because you are what you are conscious of. Right. This is what I teach. This is why I continually give the classes as much as I do every single week, because there has to be a recondition, a rethinking so that life looks different to you. And that's how you become a conqueror. That's how you become more than what they've taught you. You are. You are only something if you've gone to an Ivy League university. You are only something if you got some money. You are only something if you're rolling in the bins. You are only something, do you understand? If you're a rapper or a ball player or whatever, you are only something, right? And because this is what's promoted all the time, the bag, you are only something if you have the bag. So you have accepted that. And so since you've accepted that, and if you don't have any of those things, guess what? You feel like you're nothing. I'm going to teach you that that's a damn lie. I'm going to teach you that that's a damn lie. And when I teach you that that's a lie, new portals will open up in your mind. New everything will open up. You become a new person. That old person will die. That person that they have made, that they have conditioned you to be all your life will die. And when that person dies, all life and all opportunities and newness and strength will become available to you. Now it's not because all you see is what they made you believe. I'm going to teach you to oppose it because I oppose it, which is why I've been able to live my life the way that I've lived it, even in adverse situations that was supposed to do what? Stop me. That was supposed to be signified as trouble. They said they're going to give me life in prison. I said, no, you're not. So, I mean, that can go into a whole bunch of other things, right? But this is what the classes are for. You know, this is just what they're for. And it's not for everybody. I am not a person like got a Christian mentality that I'm trying to twist your arm in order for you to come listen to what I got to say. Listen, keep it pushing. I'm only here for the remnant. That's it. I'm only here for the remnant. I'm not trying to twist your arm. I could care less. If you find value in the information, this is the place for you. Other than that, we're going to keep this thing pushing. Okay, man. I think I'm going to get ready to go. I want to thank my brother Israel, who always comes on and is a blessing. And just to know that there's a brother like that in this world, and I know there's others that I don't know of. It's very encouraging. When our people begin to understand their true value, their true, their true power, their contributions to the world, their contributions, you know, to mankind, when you really understand who you are, right? When you don't live your life being identified by who they said that you are, then you're going to be free and you're going to be able to really walk in your power, you know? It's, it's a beautiful thing to be free and powerful. You know, it, it really is a beautiful thing to be free and powerful. 
and not as they suppose. To be able to look at everything that they have, you know, added up as value, added up as worth, to take that and throw it, throw it in the garbage can and say, I will identify what my own worth is. I will identify what my own value is, right? That is what makes you powerful. When the world tells you this is valuable, this is worth, and when you say no, this is valuable and this is worth, right? And when you can oppose what they feel. And when you can do that, it renders them powerless over you. Everybody else, it might capture. But if you have the ability to stand up and say, that's not what value and worth is, right? You become powerful. Yeah. All right. I love you guys with all my heart, man. And uh, I see you guys in class, all the remnant members. I see you guys in class tomorrow, seven o'clock. It's going to be real powerful. Let me give you, let me give you a little, a little foretaste of what we're going to be talking about. I said, I wrote this down. This is for the class tomorrow. I want to manifest that this life can produce everything. I want to manifest that this life, this information, what I teach can produce every everything and that you don't need basketball, that you don't need rapping, that you don't. Do you know what I'm saying? Because I want to challenge what your idea of everything is. You see that how my mind thinks? I said. I want to manifest that this life can produce everything, right? I want to challenge what they have taught you everything is. Because if you have accepted what they have taught you everything is, and you don't have what they have taught you, then you feel that you have no value, right? Israel was saying people are hopeless and all that. Right. Because you have accepted an idea, an indoctrination, a socialization of what you have been taught. I'm going to show you that those things are lies when it comes down to you. Right. And how to be free and how to walk in true power. Right. I'm going to show you how this can manifest everything. All right. That's tomorrow. Class. 7 p.m. sharp. West Coast time, Pacific Standard Time. Love you guys with all my heart, man. I mean it. I'm gone. Dre.